this could be me. Acclaim Entertainment are bringing us the greatest legends of wrestling together for the first time in one place. Forget about The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Here we're harking back to the American grapplers who made wrestling great. Like all the fun turns in the shade. Over 20 of the best wrestlers of all time compete in over 12 different match types. You can get to grips with the likes of Brett the Hitman Hart, Jerry the King Lawler, Jake the Snake Roberts, Jimmy Superfly Snooker, and George the Animal Steel. There's also in-depth match analysis and career guidance provided by Bobby the Brain Heenan and Captain Lou Albano. The action takes place both in the ring and in the crowd, with plenty of diverse moves and fighter interaction. You can even create your own wrestlers and add logos and text to their costumes. A game worth getting a lock on. Run Like Hell is the upcoming third-person sci-fi horror survival adventure from Digital Mayhem. You play the part of Captain Nick Connor, who just happens to be posted to the Forsetti station when aliens attack, killing most of the crew. And these aliens learn from your actions as well, becoming more intelligent as the game goes on. Digital Mayhem promises us an intense storyline, spanning seven gripping chapters of action-packed gameplay, with a powerful game engine bringing to life the characters, objects and environments in full 3D. One of the big attractions is the impressive lineup of voice talent boasted by the game. You can expect to hear the unmistakable tones of Lance Henriksen, Kate Mulgrew and Clancy Brown, along with many more. Sounds good to us. ESPN International Winter Sports 2002 is the latest update from Konami. But what can we expect to see here? There are 10 amazing events for you to ice, including downhill alpine skiing, slalom skiing, bobsleigh, snowboarding, ski jumping, freestyle mogul skiing, speed skating, figure skating and curling. The two modes on offer are Trial Mode, which allows you to master any of the events you choose, or Championship Mode, where you take up the flag of your given country and play through all the events in order. Eight countries are represented. The US, Japan, England, France, Germany, Italy, Canada and Holland, and each with differing performance characteristics and abilities. So the choice is not just aesthetic. Roll in a two-player split-screen mode and crisp, clean graphics, and things are definitely looking cool. Godai Elemental Force follows the story of Hero, heir to the throne and guardian of the elemental spirit. His parents and mentor have been killed by Akunu, leader of the Dark Ninjas, and now he must complete the trials of the elements. Only then will he be ready to face the powers of darkness in the realm of the final element. The Void awaits. Godai promises to feature 16 levels of exciting, action-packed adventure, set through the trials of the four spirit elements, earth, wind, water and fire. Ignited by fire! To make this possible, you have a varied arsenal of oriental and mystical weapons, including katana, twin blades, throwing spikes, shuriken, smoke bombs and elemental magic. Oh, too good. You know it. Besides the single player campaign, you'll also have seven two player game modes to pitch your skills against. And with 3DO promising that the control system will be simple enough for anyone to simply pick up and play, there should be no problem finding challenging opponents.
end game from Empire Interactive is the exciting new excuse to work out your trusty PlayStation 2 light gun. And what you're seeing here is some of the early code that will evolve into a glorious new gun fest. For those who need it, there's a sophisticated plot involving a story set in both the real world and a strange new virtual world. You play Jade, a 25-year-old American woman whose English boyfriend Tyler has been kidnapped by Eurodream Technologies, the creators of the virtual world used every day by the masses. Despite Tyler's obvious inability to look after himself, Jade sets out to rescue him in an adventure that takes her through 16 real-world levels set all across Europe and beyond. The meat of the game consists of facing down sophisticated artificially intelligent opponents that provide difficult and constantly shifting challenges. And you thought it was just another shooting game. Creating a genre all of its own, Res can best be described as Vib Ribbon meets Tron, and you still wouldn't have a clue what's going on. The background story has you fighting spores of a virus inside a female computer, but the game is so surreal that the plot is totally irrelevant. What you're actually doing is destroying enemies in time with the music. Each level throws 10 layers of enemies between you and the boss monster. To eliminate the enemies, you have a lock-on laser capable of 8 shots at a time, as well as a smart bomb that clears out everything, provided you charged it up. Each time you destroy a bad guy, you hear a sound which, theory states, you're supposed to tie in with the music. You can also collect the blue power-ups to transform your hero into more advanced forms. But every time you take a hit, you devolve back down until finally you pass through simple geometric shapes and then vanish. The concept is simple, the graphics are primal and the music is hypnotizing, but the whole effect is strangely compelling. Definitely a game to be tried in the dark of night, when you can really let go of reality and get lost in the game. Konami's popular RPG returns for its third installment, and this time it's in glorious 3D. Set in the same world as its predecessors, Sui Koden 3 occurs 15 years after our last visit, with a whole new storyline. So, although you may recognize some of the characters, or at least their children, the game is also very easy for newcomers to get straight into. One of the new features you'll encounter is the Trinity Sight System. 
This is actually just a fancy way of saying that you get to view the plot through the eyes of any one of the three lead characters, and you can choose to follow a different character at the start of each chapter. It's a simple way to make sure you can play the game at least three times before you've seen everything. The look of the game has also moved from its traditional 2D Asian setting into something 3D and wholly more global. Each of the three characters starts in their own distinctive region, before their respective quests eventually intertwine and the plot reaches its epic climax. Combat is also handled differently. You no longer have characters dashing out to the enemy and then returning to their start point. The new free position battle system allows them to move as they like around the 3D environment, maneuvering for position and protecting the weaker party members. There's also a buddy system, where characters can pair up to protect the weaker of the duo or attack simultaneously. With exciting battles, an involving storyline and three lead characters to work with, there should be plenty here for everyone. If you owned the original PlayStation, then you've undoubtedly heard of Mike Leroy and his journeys to Darkseid. The Shadow Man. Now the Shadow Man is back and looking buffer than ever. Ah, dead side. No place like home. Changing his image from skinny, troubled member of the undead to kick butt superhero. He's ready to return to the revamped and redecorated dark side and face the horrors beyond once more. Good. Shadow Man's second coming takes Leroy to all sorts of places, some new, some old. Now you can visit Louisiana, Iraq, the UK, Ireland, and even seek out Baba Yaga in the frozen forests of Russia. all of which are gloriously rendered and even include day and night cycles. There are many characters new and old who may help or hinder your quest. Yeah. Leroy now has Thomas Deacon, a wheelchair-bound, twin shotgun-wielding sidekick to help him along. And you can also expect to see the return of Jonesy, the gatekeeper of Deadside. I see a bunch of bad-tempered duppies hanging around the boneyard of late. Better keep an eye out. Thanks. And Nettie, the 400-year-old voodoo priestess, inhabiting the body of a 20-year-old. The villains this time are more themed on the beasts and monsters of mythology, rather than the maniacs and serial killers of the first game. And the weapons include a wide range of earth-based firearms, along with some exotic kit from the Dead Side realm. Good. And you can expect your opponents to react where you shoot them. Take out a kneecap and you'll see them limping around later. That is, if they have a later. Got it. Great. Sweet Jesus. Are you free tonight? A will it cost me? More than you can afford. Monolith Productions takes us back to the psychedelic 60s and the exciting world of international espionage. Meet agent Kate Archer, the exceedingly competent, fiercely intelligent and stunningly attractive top agent of the super-secret government agency, Unity. Certainly not. Seven of Unity's agents have been murdered by the dastardly harm organization, and the whole thing smacks of inside information. It's up to Agent Archer to get to the bottom of the mystery without making herself number eight. Hey! The atmosphere of No One Lives Forever is unashamedly lost in the 60s. Life lost in powers, but with wit and taste. 
Kate makes her way through a whole series of exotic locations, using her fabulous Q-type gadgets and innate ingenuity to take the enemy apart without even building up a sweat. Using hair clips that double as lockpicks, explosive lipstick, and a lighter that can be used as a welding torch, you'll need to use your head to overcome the varied obstacles and challenges that stand in your way. Put your wit and personality to use, causing distractions. Hmm, it says, of the library. You are the most beautiful Not to mention providing a running barrage of smart one-liners. No, but I can put you in the hospital if you want. Maybe you can find someone to take care of you there. And you can even stop and amuse yourself by listening to the conversations of the oblivious civilians as they go about their daily business. Style is the name of the game. Yes, you can just run in, guns blazing, but the chances are you'll end up spreading Miss Archer's fine looks across the paisley pattern wallpaper. Instead, you should concentrate on overcoming each obstruction with as little fuss as possible. Stealth isn't your only tool by any means, but the fewer disturbances you cause, the easier your life becomes further on. Complete each level without a hair out of place, and you've surely proved yourself worthy of Agent Archer's impeccable reputation. Again, Miss Archer. An evil force has struck the earth and the harmony created by the dolphins and humans is in mortal danger. The force ripped a hole in the fabric of reality, and one dolphin, Echo, has fallen through into the past. Echo's mission is to restore paradise and save the planet from self-destruction by recovering the stolen dolphin power, which has been scattered through time and space. However, the biggest obstacle for Echo to overcome is to avoid becoming completely blissed out by the tranquility of his surroundings. It's extremely relaxing just twisting, swooping, gliding and leaping through the beautiful submarine world without even considering taking on any of the tasks set before you. You can speak to the other marine creatures by sending a burst of sonar at them and it seems that most of them are up to something, and often in need of a hand. Help them out and you can receive help in return, such as saving a turtle from the sharks and being rewarded with a nice song to fight the sharks with in the future. As you progress through the variety of challenges, you'll learn to master all of Echo's moves to fight off the nastier sea creatures and use his vast IQ to solve the devious puzzles. For instance, trapping the great white shark in the corals using your shark song allows you to collect the power of vigor, which then allows you to complete that particular level. The creative team has benefited from the talents of award-winning science fiction author David Brin, and to keep things nicely chilled, frustration levels are minimized by quick restarts when things go wrong for you and your fishy friend. So for the most laid-back experience you can get without resorting to controlled substances, immerse yourself in Echo's watery world. Thank <laughs> you.
Step into a dark future with this thrilling and darkly ironic action adventure from Amuse. Close all exits! The part of a renegade headhunter, Jack Wade, based in California during the early 21st century. Jack used to be the top man at the anti-crime network an agency responsible for hunting down criminals and collecting their body parts, this being the preferred form of punishment in this sinister world. But something has happened and he's left suffering from severe amnesia. Ooh, with an EMP gun. I got your number, Headhunter. They told me about you. Maybe you can share some time. <laughs> you won't live long enough. With no recollection of what's transpired, he's left with no choice but to re-earn his bounty hunter qualifications and unravel the twisted trail of deceit and betrayal full of obscure motives and divided loyalties. To assist you in this task, you have a wide selection of weapons, more of which become available as you complete the various ranking tests set by your agency. You also get a fantastic motorcycle, which provides great satisfaction roaring around the city through the various locations you'll need to visit. There are plenty of criminals in need of your personal attention, but you'll also need to solve numerous puzzles to get to the bottom of the mystery. Thankfully, the puzzles tend to be localised, with their solutions always being available close to hand. The plot benefits now. greatly from the efforts of X-Files writer Philip Lawrence, who brings a grim sense of humour to the proceedings, along with all the paranoia and atmosphere of the X-Files series. The latest, latest figures show the CCS criminal control system has been a big success. You'll be kept abreast of current events by some marvellously vapid newscasters, who blatantly belie the sights you've seen with your own eyes. Stealth also plays a big part in the action, leading to some inevitable comparisons with Metal Gear Solid setting a high benchmark for itself. Whether or not Jack Wade can outdo Solid Snake remains to be seen, but he's giving it his best shot. Well worth looking out for. Gurdy is the latest title to spring from the minds of developers Core Design, best known for their Tomb Raider series. But Hurdy Gurdy couldn't be more different from those Lara Croft adventures. The plot follows the exploits of a young lad named Gurdy, who has to master the art of herding and beat the evil Sadorf in a grand herding competition held once every five years. To do this, Gerdy must make his way across the land to the site of the contest. On his journey, he meets numerous people who need his help. These distractions are actually useful to the little guy, since they always involve learning some new aspect of herding, and he really needs to improve his skills if he's going to win that competition when he gets there.
The world is filled with all kinds of animals, and each species has its own behavior and instincts. Gurdy needs to learn how all of the creatures interact with each other, and how to manipulate their actions in order to get the results he's looking for. He'll need to figure out which animals are predators and which are more passive, what sort of things they all like and dislike, and how each species behaves in the presence of all the others. There are also a few items that can be acquired to help you out, attracting some beasties while deterring others. Only armed with all this knowledge and equipment is Gerdy going to stand a chance of solving each of the puzzles set before him and ultimately getting to face the dastardly Sardoff and save the land as we know it. The cartoony graphical style and complex puzzling nature seem strangely at odds with one another, but you'll soon find yourself getting engrossed in the wonderfully charming yet fiendishly clever world of Hurdy Gurdy. Jimmy Whirlwind White returns to Dazzle Us once more with his Cockney charm and the third in his classic snooker and pool games. You can expect to find state-of-the-art kinetics which lead to a completely realistic ball potting experience. But once you've got the snooker down pat, what else is there to put into a game like this? One feature you'll find here is the addition of these spectral hands. The highly expressive animated gloves vary from region to region and represent your opponents as they take their turns at the table. And then there are the backdrops. There are many varied places to take your snooker table, but the chances are you've never thought of playing on a junk in Hong Kong harbour or stranded on an isolated desert island. Then there's always the exclusive comfort of the Bond villain's secret hideout. All the settings have plenty going on in the background, so if your opponent is taking his time about a pot, then there's still something to look at. And if all that isn't enough to keep you amused, then there are the entertaining sub-games, such as snooker basketball, endurance thumb wrestling, and even a game of good old-fashioned darts. So for everything snooker and pool that you could possibly want, and much more besides, Jimmy White has got just what you're after. Dog have managed to breathe new life into the platform genre, losing all the precision jumps and infuriating reaction tests usually associated with such games. Jack and Daxter is genuinely good fun to play and a joy to behold. Whoa! I don't think I'll ever get used to that teleporter tingling sensation. You take on the role of the quiet Jack, whose mouthy friend Daxter has managed to get himself transformed into the form of a weasel. Are you down there, um... Could you rub my feet? Now, with Daxter perched on your shoulder, making amusing asides the entire time, 
you have to search out the ancient sage and dark eco-expert, Gol Akanon, and find out more about this sinister plague upon your once fair land. The world itself is fantastic. There are no frustrating loading times, and if you can see an interesting looking structure in the distance, then you can certainly go over there and have a poke around. You needn't worry about having to trek across vast distances, as there are various vehicles to get you from place to place, if you can only get them running. completed as you see fit, spending precursor orbs that you find lying around and talking to the various characters who inhabit the world opens up new areas for hey, you. we're the ones on a big quest here. We ask you for help. Well, perhaps we can help each other. There are also numerous sub-games to play, all of which provide a fresh challenge. Judging by the smell, I'd wager your bathtub sank in the mud long ago. What's a bathtub? The principles are classic and simple in their implementation, but it's all done perfectly and without the usual irritations that platform games usually invoke. If it's pure and simple fun you're looking for, then Jack and Daxter are sure to entertain. That lazy farmer owes us a power cell. Now I can sleep in peace and take this power cell for your trouble. developers dream come true. All those gadgets, the guns, the cars, the one-liners, the girls, and this particular bond is freed from the constraints of the specific movie, which opens up a wider range of scenarios based on the whole heritage of classic Bond moments. Enjoy the ride. The story is new, of course. The cunning deviant Malpay has devised his own plans for taking over the world, building himself an invincible army of evil clones to do his dirty work. Freedom to approach each of the disappointingly short levels in your own way is rather limiting. The puzzles aren't really that puzzling, and overall it's a case of blasting your way through from A to B. But from the very first hostage job until your stealthy embassy assault many missions later, Bond's use of the superb Quake 3 engine still delivers a highly polished shooter, where the pace never loosens its grip. Fireworks. The lock cutting laser and the Q claw frequently come in handy but none of the other gizmos are used more than once. Aside from making use of this outstanding first-person engine, it's the in-car driving missions that really stand out. Designed by the Need for Speed developers and featuring some of Bond's most famous motors, they offer solid arcade-style driving through four of the twelve missions. Is that building straight ahead of us, Zoe? Why don't we drop in for a visit? On the ahead. EA has achieved stunning levels of detail, especially on the variety of Bond babes who pop up to distract the suave 007. Nice of you to join me, 007. Sorry, Arl. I was... But overall, Agent Under 5 just lacks that certain something. None of the levels stand out like the memorable missions in Goldeneye, and things can be just a bit too linear at times to really suck you in. Thank you. 
but it's still the best dosage of bomb to appear on either of the PlayStation consoles, and definitely worth a try. I don't know how to thank you. I'm sure we'll think of something. Inevitably, Wave Rally is going to be compared to the visually impressive Splashdown. Which one should the avid waterborne racing fanatic buy? Well, that really depends on what it is you're looking for. As with Splashdown, one of the first things that catches your eye is the amazing water effect. But unlike its rival, the watery illusion tends to fall apart when you get moving. On the plus side though, the way the waves affect your jet ski is spot on, with your ride getting bounced about just as you'd expect and handling beautifully in accordance with your environment. There are a number of championships to compete in over 12 different courses. You can also expect to see some of the courses repeated, but with different obstacles and weather, which can make it a whole new experience. The obstacles are well placed to force you around the courses in certain ways and the weather can really set the mood for each of the races. All this means that you're going to have to know these courses backwards if you want to go home with a trophy. One of the big selling points of Wave Rally though is the simplicity of its control system. Unlike the complicated system found in Splashdown, Wave Rally provides you with just throttle and steering options. After that it's all down to you, what could be simpler. It's also nice to see your opponents make mistakes. The problem is that their skill seems to fluctuate wildly, even within a single race, leaving you wondering whether you won on merit or if it was just because your opponents fouled up on the first lap. The absence of any form of career mode is also a bit disappointing. You get the championships, some time trials and an uninspiring stunt mode, but that's your lot. So ultimately, it comes down to the question of what you want from your game. If you want realism and a satisfying sense of achievement, then go for Splashdown. But if it's good, simple racing action with a pick-up-and-play control system that you want, then Wave Rally is definitely the order of the day. Whilst it may be a hit RPG on the PC, Baldur's Gate is coming to PS2 in the form of an action-adventure game. Taking up the hack-and-slash style of the PC's Diablo games, the heart of the adventure is the annihilation of your enemies and the development of your character. You have three characters to choose from, all of whom can fight and throw magic to varying levels. There's the elven sorceress, who excels in the magical arts, along with the amazingly destructive dwarf, and the slightly more debonair ranger. The action starts as you set out to complete a number of quests. From this point on, you're faced with numerous hordes of antisocial monsters, all of which use a variety of tactics to throw you off your game. mop-up swarming opposition and their more challenging bosses and you can then loot through their corpses and the various pieces of furniture that litter the halls. You also get experience as you head onwards and when the green bar is filled you level up. This gives you the chance to improve your various talents or even gain some fun new spells to make your life that little bit easier and a lot more colourful. 
The equipment you pinch on your regular outings can be sold off at the local store to raise funds for some nice new monster splatting apparatus. But you'll also find that some of it's worth keeping. When you equip a new piece of armor or weaponry to your arsenal, they immediately become visible on your character. So you'll have to keep upgrading to stay in touch with the current factions if nothing else. The two-player cooperative mode is all good fun, but movement of each player is limited to the edge of the screen, which is a bit of a disadvantage when the viewing area is so small to begin with. The graphics are gorgeous, as you can see, with some really satisfying spell effects and monsters. It's super smooth no matter how many of them pile in at once. The water and fire effects are especially impressive. The only real flaw that can be picked here is the inherent repetitiveness of wasting everything in sight, looting the corpses and heading back to the shops. If hack and slash is your thing, you surely won't be disappointed here, otherwise you might find things getting just a little tedious before too long. It's that time of year again. Time for the latest upgrade of EA Sports NBA license. But is this just another redressing? Or have they seriously improved on last year's mediocre offerings? Well, it looks like EA has listened to the criticisms and made every effort to put things right. That was a slick to energy. Firstly, last year's criminally absent franchise mode has been fully implemented this time around. Taking control of a squad over 10 seasons, team selection can be considered, potential talent can be scouted, and pre-season drafts can be performed. In short, everything you need to keep the game interesting off the court. On the court, things have been improved in the wake of the excellent NBA street. The action is much more exciting, and every score feels like it's been well earned. The player movement, passing and shooting have been tightened up considerably, along with providing a huge number of moves, layups and dunks. Alley-oops are now much easier to perform and as satisfying as ever. No longer is the only tactic to run blindly at the basket. Now you can benefit from clever passing moves and strategic play that makes the most of the icon passing system. However, defense still ends up being fairly dull, with little chance of tackling or intercepting passes without meticulous timing. Your only option is to guard your basket and wait for your opponent to hand the play back to you. NBA Live 2002 isn't just another graphical overhaul, although the visuals have been improved. Instead, you have a complete revision of the playing style that makes this probably the best serious basketball sim available, alongside the arcade play of NBA Street. If you're serious about your basketball, then NBA Live 2002 is well worth making a play for. Games based on movies are usually a bad idea, so a game based on a bad movie seems like an even worse idea. 
Amazingly, despite its roots in the lukewarm Stallone film, Driven does a rather good job of being a decent kart racing game. There are two single player modes. Arcade mode simply gives you the chance to thrash a few cars around the tracks, but story mode is where the heart of the game can be found. Here you can unlock the various hidden cars and drivers. On top of that, you have the entertaining multiplayer mode, which suffers from a slightly restricted view. The sensation of speed is impressive, but the most spectacular events are the crashes, of course. Just like the movie, you can send your cars pinwheeling about the place, throwing off debris in every direction. And there's a good damage model for the cars as well, so their performance is appropriately degraded the more you wrap them around lampposts. The big problem is you get to see this kind of scene much more often than you'd like. This stems from the game's most annoying flaw, the twitchy handling and overly sensitive throttle, both of which conspire to drive you into the scenery and the opposition at every possible opportunity. One of the biggest innovations is the zone. This is a nice effect that occurs after you've managed to drive perfectly for a short time. Everything goes quiet except for the rushing wind in your ears. The edge of the screen blurs and everything slows down. Driving becomes much easier in the zone and the whole effect is very cool in a weird kind of way. Overall, Driven comes over as a pretty impressive attempt at using a movie license. The UPN is where you'll find the finest military men and women. When Dropship was first announced, it looked nothing special. But as development continued, things began to look up. As such, it seems rather a shame that we've come full circle. If you're good enough, we need you. I don't see how you got in. You'll set the task of piloting a Dropship, supporting ground operations with your vertical takeoff antics and aerobatic displays. The problem is that it just isn't that exciting. While it's possible to perform some nice looking moves, there's not much of a challenge. The ship has two flight modes that are supposedly tricky to master, which are really quite easy to get to grips with. There's the slow but precise hover mode, which allows you to perform careful maneuvers and landings. Then, if you're moving fast enough, you can open up into flight mode. This pushes your top speed up to 13,000 kph, which still manages to feel uninspiringly slow. It's not helped by the fact that most of your operations in this mode consist mainly of flying in a straight line across fast playing areas. Even the more advanced ships you get as you progress through the stages fail to generate much enthusiasm. They handle more smoothly than the early versions, but things never really take off. When you've had enough of flying about in circles, you can get down on terra firma. Sadly, this mode proves to be rather sluggish too, not providing any real feeling of movement, challenging you to make your way around some astoundingly obvious mines and other equally simple obstacles. The other disadvantage of going mud crawling is your proximity to the scenery. The backgrounds are even more bland close up. This is gonna be very, very interesting. The original SSX was the launch title of choice when the PlayStation 2 launched, and also had the distinction of being by far and away the best snowboarding game ever. Until now.
With SSX Tricky, the developers have taken their own game apart and rebuilt it from the bottom up, improving the game in every conceivable regard. If you're after top-of-the-range graphics, super speeds and circuits jam-packed with trick potential, you've come to the right place. So what's the deal? Firstly, there are two new tracks. Garibaldi is a super speedster's dream, crammed with massive drops and wonderful ramps, meaning that performing the most death-defying tricks imaginable is a walk in the park. Designed for the beginner, it's a very cool entry into the world of SSX. Sweet In my sleep, man! At the other end of the snowboarding spectrum, you have the new Alaska course. This is judged suitable for super experts and is an extremely fast, absolutely beautiful ice course. Wonderful stuff. The graphical rush is truly something. But if you're thinking this is just more of the same old SSX with a couple of new courses, you're wrong. All of the previous tracks have been totally remodeled. You might recognize the odd shortcut or piece of geography, but otherwise it's totally new. Adding to the newness of it all is the variation found within the courses in the race and show-off modes. Show-off is all about performing as many tricks as possible, and to help the cause, each course is remodeled with new rails and jumps. The tricks in the game have also been rejigged massively, with the inclusion now of uber tricks. These are totally outrageous board-based frolics, which take a lot of time to execute, but look spectacular and reward you with massive points bonuses. Chain them into combos with other tricks and flips, and you can rack up some impressive scores. So, more tricks, more courses, tons of new characters, and lots of changes and additions. You might think it's a near-perfect game, and it is. The only slight irritation we have with SSX Tricky is the jerkiness that sometimes creeps into the race mode. But it really is only slightly upsetting and doesn't really dent your enthusiasm for what is a truly exceptional game. Awarded 9 out of 10 in PSW, this really is something special. Go buy it. System Works returned to the 2D fighting game market with Guilty Gear X, the sequel to one of the few titles in this genre that's not developed by Capcom or SNK. So what does this independent title have to show for itself? Well, there's actually a storyline, but that isn't what we're here for, is it? What you get are 16 characters to choose from, each with their own style and moves. They all have an overdrive special attack, slashing, punching and kicking combos. Move cancels, instant kills and aerial blocks, making for a pretty complex fighting system. Although experienced gamers will soon find the instant kill to be very irritating. There's nothing worse than mastering a stylish fighting technique, only to get wiped out by some lucky move from a beginner. For the most part, the characters range through the sort of styles you'd expect. There's the hard and buff Chip Zanuck, the big and powerful Potemkin, and May, who specializes in being small and very quick. There are a few oddities, however, such as Milia and her amazing fighting hair. Despite the characters looking cool and interesting in their own cartoony way, with some dramatic and explosive special moves, the visual effects are spoilt by the ropey zooming camera angles, which can easily render the backgrounds shimmering and messy. 
Overall, Guilty Gear X is more of the same. There's nothing outstanding in the menu here, but it manages to fulfill all of the fundamental requirements of a fighting game. If you liked the original, or feel the need for another fighting game in your life, then it fits the bill. If you're looking for something innovative, then you'll have to look elsewhere. Valve's Half-Life has finally arrived from the PC, and even though it's four years old now, this fantastic title looks set to make just as big an impression on the PS2. When a government experiment goes horribly pear-shaped, a rip in the space-time continuum leaves poor Gordon Freeman battling his way past countless waves of biological nastiness and armed military hard nuts. Everything you face has been designed to perfection. It's even possible to enlist the help of Black Mesa's research staff, who spend most of their time finding new and comical ways of dispatching themselves. What PS2 Half-Life does offer as its PC counterpart is the exclusive new two-player decay mode. A series of specially designed levels offer you the chance to play as either Dr. Cross or Dr. Green while a friend takes the opposite role in your united fight against the enemy. And if you have no friends to share the experience with, you can even play through from a single player perspective and switch between the two characters as you progress. As a single player experience, Half-Life is one of the best, and very little has changed from the original PC game. Only Red Faction comes close to presenting a story and experience as engrossing as Gordon's journey through Black Mesa. Assuming you've never played the PC original, you need to go out and buy this game. You simply won't stop playing once you get into the engrossing storyline. Aside from a slight speech impediment and lack of four-player gaming, Half-Life is one of the best single-player shooters ever. Buy it now. Miramax is starting production this Friday on Bluntman and Chronic. Does it say who's playing us in the movie? I'm sure it'll be Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. You know, they put them in a bunch of movies. People have been asking me for years, why don't you do a Jay and Silent Bob movie? They're funny. They're the funniest part of your movies, which, to which I'm always stung. I'm like, really? The stoner jokes? Ugh. But um, they're like, why don't you do a Jay and Silent Bob movie, man? That would be really funny. And I've always been like, yeah, how? You know, there's two characters. One of them doesn't even talk. Ladies, Jay and Silent Bob are in the his heels! Uh, who are these guys? This is Jay and Silent Bob. Guys, this is Sissy, Missy, and Chrissy. I met them inside. They're gonna hitch a ride. Him and Silent Bob are trying to uh, stop this movie from being made because people were talking about him on the internet. So he's like the main guy. Jay and Silent Bob are the main guys. And there's all these cool cameos. And they're trying to go stop this movie from getting made. And uh, it's fun. Action. My reaction was like, ooh, this is a big one. This is gonna, it's gonna be funny. And it's like real, you know, it's like a pop movie. It's like, okay, this is not, this is not an Angelica film. This is not a, this is not an art house movie. For you, I do it. Just for you, I do it. 
My reaction to this script was that it was like nothing I'd ever read. It was very different and very wacky. My friends and I are on a road trip. Your friends, huh? Where are they at? And um, I know that's Kevin's sense of humor, and um, I, I like it when he takes digs at Hollywood. He doesn't take it all too seriously, and he doesn't take himself too seriously, and it's really funny. Jason Lee is Brody because people um, in the fan base love that character and they love Lee's performance. Guys, I would find Hold McNeil and ask for my movie check. We got to get paid! And on that note, we cue the music. Matt, Matt, Matt! Matt, Matt, Matt! Matt, Matt, Matt! So that was kind of cool, the notion of returning to that after six years, because we made Mallrats back in 95. And it's weird, if you put on Mallrats and put on a scene from Jay and Bob Strike Back, Jason Lee hasn't really aged, doesn't, it doesn't look different at all. It hasn't missed a beat. Yeah, Jay and Silent Bob have become icons to a lot of people. And these figures, these comedy figures, and there's such a history with these characters now that you can see them fronting a movie like Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. The adventures of Jay and Silent Bob, there's so much you can do with these characters. Because Jay is constantly blabbing, and Silent Bob is constantly looking, and Kevin does a lot with his eyes and his body and his expressions, and there's a lot there. My strongest impression of working with Kevin, I think, is that he keeps everything fun and lighthearted and is so fun and easygoing himself that uh, it's just all like a big game, and he's just having fun. and. He doesn't know why he's been allowed to make films and given money to make films, but he's so excited that he loves doing it. Another white boy in this movie? Dang! Whoa. I think George Lucas is gonna sue somebody. of buying the same old videos? Huh. Well, good news, kids. Wow. How much reversion must we, the people, endure? It's time you met Family Guy. I'm Peter Griffin. God, I hate this freaking cat. He's a husband. I do have a mind of my own. And hey, yeah, I know. You're a feminist, and I think that's adorable. But this is grown-up time, and I'm the man. He's a father. I am the biggest loser I know. Oh, I know just how you feel, Pumpkin. I've had my share of disappointments, too. It's a girl. <laughs> can, can, you, can you check again? He's a pet owner. Hey, barkeep, whose leg do you have to hump to get a dry martini around here? And what's more? <laughs> You know, I feel kind of bad, you guys. I promised my wife I wouldn't drink. Oh, don't feel bad, Peter. Oh, gee, I never thought of it like that. He's out now to own on video and DVD. I need you to look after Stewie while I'm teaching piano lessons. Oh, geez, Lois, I just spent all morning on a boat with my friends drinking beer, telling jokes, and screwing around. How about a little me time? It's the crazy animated comedy. Are you and Dad gonna get a divorce? <laughs> oh, honey, maybe. That's got to be seen to be believed. Own the whole first season. Excellent. The mind control device is nearing completion. Stewie, I said no toys at the table. Damn you, vile woman! Wow, Lois Griffin. Nice melons. Hey, listen, pal. Peter, I'm holding melons. Family Guy. <laughs> Own the whole first season on video and DVD now. Uh, it's called Dude Where's My Car. And right off the bat, I think all the guys are laughing. Like, I think you know, so many guys have like partied too much the night before and lost their car. What's going on? Here's what happens, right? We wake up and our car is gone. You know, that could happen to anybody. You know, your car just disappears. Dude, where's my car? And we have no recollection whatsoever of the previous night. Man. How wasted were we last night? <laughs> well, I touched Christy Boner's hoo hoo. We're on the hook for uh, $200,000 that belongs to a transsexual stripper, and my car's gone. The next day, they wake up and they realize that they lost their car. And what happens is when they try to retrace all their steps the night before, we keep running into all these people. We meet these jumpsuit chicks. Are you Jesse and Chester? Uh. 
I don't know, why? If you are Jesse and Chester, perhaps we will give you pleasure. That's us! Right here! Christy Boner, who is like the hottest of the hot. It's Christy Boner! The hottest of the hot. I didn't name my character. Hi, Jesse. I had a really good time with you last night. And my character's name is Christy Boner. Can I say that on TV? Have you seen my car? Well, I saw the back seat. <laughs> Oh, I'm talking about the whole thing. They yeah, realized they went to the strip club. No way we were here last night. <laughs> we never fit in at a place like this. Look, everyone, it's Mr. Jesse and Mr. Chester. They come across all these bizarre characters, and all these things keep coming up, and it's just like, what the hell is going on here? At the end, it's, it's kind of trippy. You don't really know if what happened was for real. You know, it's like otherworldly. It was just one of those things like, this is so bizarre. And that's kind of what happens. Ruby. Ruby. Wake up. Mommy. Mommy? We have a new addition. I'm Ruby Baker. I used to go to Shady Lane. It's in the valley. So how come you moved here now? It's just an accident. Imagine if the unspeakable happened. Where would you go? Who could you trust? You guys ready Thanks. for Malibu? I'm assuming that you know the glasses. They were my next door neighbors. I've known them my whole life. I know that your parents chose them after a great deal of consideration. We're here to spoil you rotten. But in this perfect house, at least I'm not hopelessly greedy, borrowing a million dollars from some loan sharks. Wish I would have paid off by now. There are secrets she can't uncover. The guardians for Red and me, they're not what they seem at all. I overheard your conversation. You were listening in on my call? Suspicions she can't ignore. I'm never alone here. I watch everything I do. And behind the perfect couple. I found a big new personal piggy bank. When we spoke after the funeral, you had said that we had more than enough. How much would that be? Four million dollars. Lies their perfect crime. She'll get into your medical bag. To a depressed 16 year old. Suicide just makes more sense. You and I are gonna have some straight talk right now. Where are the children? This is where I should have put you from day one. They've got to sleep sometime. Even guardians let down their guard. Ruby? You and Red are mine. Over 20 years, his movies have filled us with fear. Now, director John Carpenter will take you to a place where even he has never gone before. Get out of here! It was supposed to be a routine prisoner transport, but here, a million miles from home on the planet Mars. Hello? Anybody here? They're about to discover nothing is what it seems. We got a situation ahead. Everybody in the mine's gone inside. What the hell is going on out there? Whatever used to live here, we woke it up in Texas. I'm talking about a kind of possession. Something's kicking out there. Spotted us. Get back here now. None of us is going to survive if we don't stick together. Come on. Time to stay alive. The fear is real. <laughs> the threat is spreading. Take the time I saved your life. Yeah, run a tab. And the battle has begun. From the master of terror. Go! Get out! John Carpenter's 
ghosts of Mars. It's their planet. We're the aliens. Still unconfirmed for European release, Sony's 3D fighter-based shooter Sky Gunner takes to the skies in Japan with its fun game mechanics and distinct anime styling. Animated intro sequences introduce the elite Sky Gunner mercenaries. Hardy is the main security force chief and governs the duo of Kopeng, Ciel and Femme against the legendary criminal malice of Ventre and his band of rogue pilots, the Pulets. Each adorable character pilots an old-fashioned looking aircraft and takes part in their own story mode mission scenarios to rack up serious points against Vantra's dastardly henchmen. Bonus points and multipliers are awarded for sharpshooting and the chain bonus is achieved by catching unsuspecting enemies in the blast radius of other targets. Special maneuvers and weapons are also available and each character has flight maneuvers for taking the enemy by surprise. But these can soon cause your heat meter to overload, and you'll need to wait for it to cool down again before you can unleash a barrage of attacks. Of course, there are more friends and foes to help and hinder your heroic team in their attempt to save the city from Vantra's evil intentions. The graphical detailing on Sky Gunner was pleasing enough, with some charming character animations and imaginative plane designs. But the biggest letdown is an awkward control system and the horrendous slowdown that occurs when battle starts to get hectic. Infuriating to say the least. Let's hope it doesn't touch down over here. Linda has to be one of the weirdest games you'll ever encounter. This mind-bending game has been created by Japan-based Treasure, who already have a reputation for coming up with some of the odder titles out there. The story begins with 13 demons seeking out 13 sisters to possess their souls. The last of these sisters is Linda, who manages to avoid being possessed, instead capturing the demon in her scarf. She now has the power of this demonic scarf to help her rescue the others. Meanwhile, the remaining 12 sisters have all been changed by the demons, who are trying to make them into some warped personifications of ideal beauty. There are 12 stages to complete, each guarded by one of the Twisted Sisters, and all accessed in the central hub, which bears more than a passing resemblance to Aha's Take On Me video. The Demon Scarf can be wielded in all sorts of bizarre ways. When unleashed, it lunges forwards in the form of a warped claw. This claw can pester enemies, grab projectiles and throw them back, climb and essentially pull and pinch any object in the game's impressive and elastic 3D environments. The gameplay itself is good, simple fun, but it should be obvious that any extended attempts to play this game are going to leave you with a tenuous grasp on reality at best. Field is coming to PS2 with the fourth installment of the series, and developers from software 
claimed that it's accessible enough that newcomers to the series should have no problem getting into the action, but at the same time it should also be familiar to players of the previous three games. Since Kingsfield 3 wrapped up all the loose ends of the previous story, things are beginning afresh this time around. The plot follows the story of a hero investigating an underground realm after a catastrophe causes havoc in a remote mountain town. The style of the game owes a lot to the second game of the series, which can be considered a blessing since it's roundly believed to have been the best of the lot so far. The game engine has been upgraded with modified menus, an expanded item list, and more variety within the dungeons. The new weight capacity limit works in a similar way to the system found in Armored Core. What's more, you'll also find that your weapons and armor will be degraded with use. Fortunately, various characters that you meet will be able to restore these items and make them as good as new. Put all this together with improved character animations and graphics, making full use of PS2's technology, and you're left with one impressive looking RPG, well worth looking out for. Six hours ago, the Big Shell was seized by an armed group. Do we have an ID? Former members of the Navy SEAL Special Anti-Terrorist Training Squad Dead Cell. Russian private army members may also be involved. It's a highly trained group and they have the Big Shell under complete control. Here it is, probably the most highly anticipated game of the year. Following in the footsteps of Hideo Kojima's PlayStation 1 masterpiece, Metal Gear Solid 2 has a lot to live up to, but building on such awesome foundations, can it actually fail? The only criticisms anyone could level at the amazingly popular Metal Gear Solid was that it was too short by far and possessing one too many overlong cutscenes. Have these issues been addressed? This is impossible. Nothing will hit her. Is she the one they call Fortune? Otacon, we have a problem. What's that? Well, the cutscenes are still here, only now they have reached a truly epic scale. However, if you want to stand a chance of keeping up with a seriously thoughtful and amazingly convoluted storyline, then you really ought to sit through them all. Impressively, every cutscene has been created using the in-game engine. and the level of detail is fantastic. You can tell as much from a character's pose and gestures as you can from their actual conversation. This time around, there are a number of new skills to play with. I am Shalashaska. First up is his swimming talent, allowing for all manner of new approaches, along with his aptitude for hanging off ledges by his fingertips in order to avoid the enemy's gaze. Is there anyone here that can give me happiness? On top of that, he has a nice first-person look mode, which can be used at any time, which to some extent compensates for his limited access to the active radar. And you'll need all your stealthing expertise and more if you're going to get through this one in one piece. It's 
been a while, brother. Who are you? The opponents are now more intelligent than ever. They'll radio in for assistance, running away when in danger, and working together to sweep areas clean. Unfortunately, the bosses don't appear to be half as intelligent as their troops and can generally be dealt with by simply learning their routines and exploiting their weakness over and over again. Still, this is obviously a game that absolutely everyone should own. The cutscenes may be gargantuan, and the boss fights may be a little simplistic, although their conversations are often amusing, but there is certainly enough here to make this a must-have for everyone. Not too shabby, is it? New York, I mean. And that brings our tour to its conclusion. Calling teams off and Bravo. Deploy at the big shell as scheduled. Approximately six hours ago, the big shell was seized by an armed group. Do we have an ID? Former members of the Navy SEAL Special Anti-Terrorist Training Squad Dead Cell. Russian private army members may also be involved. It's a highly trained group and they have the big shell under complete control. So you're looking for even more Metal Gear Solid and you don't mind a few spoilers? Then here you go. This is impossible. Nothing will hit her. Is she the one they call Fortune? Otacon, we have a problem. I used to hang around department store clock counter. The first big revelation is the change of hero. Yes, that's right, you don't get to play Snake for the entire game. In fact, you only get to see him for the very first part of the game. From that point on, you're introduced to the fresh face of his foxhound colleague, Ryder, also known as Jack. <laughs> I am Shalashaska. Is there anyone here that can give me happiness? This new hero brings his own relationships to cast and crew all of which are played out in lengthy cutscenes for your viewing pleasure, as well as possessing a number of new abilities just to keep things interesting. Watch on and see what else there is to this amazing game.
It's been a while, brother. Who are you? Not too shabby, is it? New York, I mean. <laughs> and that brings our tour to its conclusion. Time Splitters was one of the most popular titles from the release of PS2, but it was hampered by a less than complete single player mode. Now developer Free Radical has had a chance to get to grips with the new technology, and Time Splitters 2 looks set to make up for all the shortcomings of its predecessor. Great attention has been lavished upon the single player mode, taking numerous leads from the hugely successful GoldenEye. The levels are layered, with each new difficulty level requiring you to achieve a whole new set of objectives. The, light. The, light. the actual story follows in the footsteps of the original game, but with its own distinct narrative. You can expect to encounter over 90 new characters, all portrayed in vivid detail, right down to details like teeth. You may come to recognize the maps, but all the characters and objects will have changed, and you'll need even more skill and judgment to make it through to the next stage. Each of them has a distinct personality. Some will be evasive, others will be cautious or aggressive, and expect their attacks to be tricky. They aren't all going to charge straight at you. To help you out, there's a vast selection of weapons available to you, and if that's not enough, then you can always take control of one of the sentry guns and give the enemy a taste of their own medicine. As you'll no doubt have noticed, the other benefit derived from Free Radical's exploration of the PS2 technology is the advanced graphics. We can now look forward to all manner of new visual treats, such as particle effects, fire, smoke and fog. All of this adds to the already brilliant multiplayer game seen in the original. It's looking fantastic. We'll find out for sure in the new year.
When Onimusha first made its appearance on PS2, it proved to be extremely popular. The only major drawback to Capcom's masterpiece was the criminally short lifespan, with the game lasting about 10 hours. But that's where the sequel comes in, of course. Set in 16th century Japan against a backdrop of warlords battling for supremacy, Onimusha 2 is set 13 years after the original game. Once again, you get to take on the role of a powerful samurai warrior, but this time you're helped along by a number of allies who fight alongside you. The gameplay greatly resembles that of the first game, with a heavy emphasis on exploration, item collection and of course combat. A game will be treated to a glittering array of glorious cinematics, as well as some impressive in-game graphics. Capcom promises us more details and realistic touches, including better water and rain effects. If these early images are anything to go by, then Onimusha 2 will definitely be something worth looking out for over the upcoming months. Keep your eyes peeled.